Hi guys and welcome back to Rich Reviews. So today we're going to talk about the two brakes that exist on the Ferrari 458 and predominantly removing what's called the gearbox lock brake or the gearbox lock. To be able to remove the gearbox lock, you have to use the tool that's within the tools that are provided in the tool wrap for the Ferrari 458. Uh, the tool wrap is provisioned in the in the compartment luggage in the luggage compartment area, and it's actually on the left-hand side. Remove the, the left-hand side tools wrap section, and the tool you're after is in two parts. This part fits into the actual gearbox and it locates under a slot. So you have to make sure that you have the slot positioned in the correct area within the toolbox. And there's a, there's a little hole that I'll show you that you actually apply, you put this, um, you use this tool and you enter it into the, into the slot in the gearbox to be able to remove the gearbox lock. Now, this is an extension lever that you use and you must make sure that you have this that you have this um, pushed together very tightly. Now there is a spline on this, so there's the locating spline. You can see there. There's a slot, and there's you can't see it very well, but there's actually an indentation there which locates into that slot. So you have to make sure that's in there, and then push it in very very tight. See that's in there quite tight. The reason you want it in there quite tight because the last thing you want is this falling into the engine compartment because it's a nightmare to get out apparently. So then we go into the rear engine compartment. I'm just gonna use the light from my phone. So, if you're putting the camera down here, this is where you locate the attachment into the gearbox. Now you won't be able to see it, but there's a, there's a certain type of um, slot locator. It's not a slot, but it's a, it's a locator, a circular locator in the top of the gearbox where you fit the tool. Now, I would not recommend, <laughs> I would not recommend any, any normal person trying to, trying to um, remove the parking lock from the gearbox. It was a nightmare to get that located. I had to guide my hand in through here, underneath, to locate the device, to stop it from falling down into the engine compartment. It was really a nightmare. And then what you do is, if you look down here again, and what you do is you can see that the bar is bent in a certain way and what you do is you turn it half a turn to the left you can see it's bent in, in a certain way to be able to enable this device this tool to to wrap around the bar that's there and it's already now unlocked and what you get on the actual screen on your on your 458 dashboard is as you can see there it says parking lock Disabled. In addition to removing the gearbox parking lock, what I've also done is disengaged the parking brake, which is actually actuated on the, I believe, on the rear wheels. It's actuated in a normal way, like a, a handbrake would be, um, with the pads on the on the rear brakes, I believe. Although you can't actually hear a device disengage when you switch that off, but it's electronic parking brake, and you do that by switching the ignition off. Sorry, you do that by switching the ignition on, and then you use the um, the normal button. Um, on the right hand side which is for your parking brake and you disengage it so you, you press the top part and it comes up on the dashboard and says parking off. So it's important you have to do both these devices and then now I can actually move the car back um, a couple of feet so all this is to be able to move the car back so I don't get flat spots on the wheels because this car is going to be stored for around six months during the winter and it's already a month and a half nearly two months into its storage period. So I'm in a position now, I want to move the car back a bit um, to be able to move the suspension around a bit, which is good for a car, so it actually isn't kept in the same position all the time. So the suspension will get moved around a bit. Obviously, the wheel carriers will get moved around. Um, uh, they're called uprights as well in America, but in the UK, we call them wheel carriers. So they'll get moved around. 
So the bearings will get moved, everything will get moved around a little bit, albeit only a couple of feet, but they will get moved, which is better for the car to be moved around a little bit during a period of six months. The reason I'm doing this without starting the car, I suspect 90% of you will be moving the car backwards and forwards in this way, if you do bother to move it backwards and forwards. The, uh, most of you will be actually starting the car and moving it backwards and forwards. Well, the reason I'm not doing that is because the most amount of wear occurs on a car, especially a performance car, in starting the car. If you start a car and you don't get it up to proper operating temperature by actually going out and driving it, you introduce the most wear that you could on an engine in a small period of time. Um, and of course, what people may do is say, okay, well, I'll warm the car up in situ then. Well, no, that's not good either because the car isn't under load. It's not good to warm a car up just by letting it tick over because it's not got the, the, the oil pump isn't moving the oil around the engine at the proper pressures properly. Um, it's just not a good idea. You've got the worst case of wear situation there if you start a car and let it tick over without warming it up. The ideal situation would be when you start a car from cold, especially in the winter, and if you're going to drive it, is to start it up, let it tick over for around a minute, 30 seconds to a minute, and then drive off. So you've got the everything um, engaged, you've got the management system which has checked everything and is engaged and, and as long as the management system comes back with all checks cleared then obviously then after about a minute then drive off. Now I've performed this approach with a classic 911, um, out, yeah it was an air called 911 as you know from, from watching my previous videos, if you haven't watched those videos, see below. Um, and that worked, that kept my car in very good condition for 12 years so I know what I'm doing. Albi, this is obviously a mo lot more modern car, a lot more complicated with a, a more intelligent management system, etc. And obviously it's an, an automatic dual clutch gearbox, so it's very different to my manual uh, 993. I didn't have to do those things with my 993. What they'd been a 993 is put it in neutral, <laughs> took the handbrake off, and well, the handbrake was never on anyway when it's stored, and moved the car back. Um, no, and that's another thing, if you've got a manual handbrake on a car and you're storing it, obviously never, I've, I think most of you realise this, but you never leave a handbrake on on a car that uses conventional pads to clamp or, or um, brake shoes to engage a, a brake, a handbrake, because those brake shoes will, or pads, will just lock themselves and glue themselves onto the discs or onto the drums, whichever type of car you've got, whichever type of brake system you've got, and you'll have a nightmare disengaging them. So what we'll try and do now is move the car back. Now we've got both brakes off. So we've got the gearbox part lock off and we've got the actual parking brake off. So, which is known as the electronic parking brake, the EPB. So now we've got both of those off, we should now be able to move the car back and then I will re-engage the part lock um, to set the system back as it is expected. And then um, obviously I'll leave the electronic parking brake off anyway, as I have done before, because you shouldn't leave that on. Right, let's try and move it back. There you go. <laughs> okay, so as you can see there, it was a hell of an effort. And this is a lot heavier than the 993, but we managed to move the car back. And if you see the imprint that the tire tread has left in the carpet, that's the amount of pressure that is on the tire all the time. And that's why you can get flat spots because it's staying in that position for a long time. Now, obviously I've done the usual thing. I've overinflated the tires as well. So I've put an additional 10 PSI in the tires over and above the standard PSI. So I put them up to around 40. Some people put them up to 45. I've played safe and put them up to 40. Because the tire is overinflated, obviously it's less saggy. That means you're gonna get less chance of flat spotting as well. So the optimum approach is to actually move the car forwards and back um, a small amount just to move it off the same piece of tires in effect and to over inflate the tires. So we've managed what we hope to achieve. So now I'm gonna put the parking lot back on and put the car back to, um, back, back to sleep as it were. So as you can see the car's now further back. It's at the furthest back that we can go within the garage. Um, we've got the situation where we've got um, a door pillar, a garage pillar here, a brick pillar. So, and we've got an inset pillar here as well. So the, the door will literally just about clear the inset pillar. So this is as far back as we can move it, but it's fine because it gives us uh, enough of a, a new section of tire to reduce flat spotting. So what we're gonna do now is re-engage the parking lock. Now, this is um, simply done by, just put this light, 
down here from my phone. We just simply move the lock half a turn to the right. It was as simple as that. Now, what I'll do now is just check. We'll just check now that it's correctly locked now on the dash. So it now says in the center of the dash, so it now says in the center of the dash, park and auto. So, so we're done. Um, I'll now remove the tool and I'll just show you how I'm gonna remove the tool as well. Put my hand behind. You've gotta make sure obviously you don't damage the electronic device. Fortunately, I've got long arms. Now I can just feel it now. So what I'm gonna do is just support the tool to stop the tool from separating. And twist it round from the bottom. As you can see, it's now separated. So I'll now pull this out manually by hand. You've got to be so careful. Do not want to drop this tool in the engine compartment. As I showed before, the tool locates via a spline. Do not rely on that fixing to hold it together while you're putting it into the socket because it will fall apart and then you'll have these down there and you'll in, you're into them. Um, either obviously taking it, getting it to Ferrari so as they can um, remove the tool or obviously taking off the undercover of the car, the body, um, the body underplates or undercovers and so you can get through from the underneath to be able to remove the tool. So you have to be very careful. So I would recommend um, anybody other than somebody who's performed their own mechanics before or obviously a service shop, a service centre to, to perform this sort of an operation. Um, I, but I just I wanted to show you what was involved in performing this. I'll use this approach to move the car forwards and backwards. Um, but obviously I'm savvy and I have performed on my own mechanics before. I used to rebuild engines on my cars years ago when I was younger. And so I'm mechanically minded. Um, therefore, um, it didn't phase me to perform this operation. Hopefully this has been very informative for you and given you an appreciation of the, of the different locks that are um, implemented on the, on the 458. This obviously goes for the 458 Italia and the Spider, probably the Speciale and the Aperta as well. Um, and it's not a simple case of having just an electronic parking brake as you can see you've got an actual gearbox brake as well. And the gearbox brake automatically is engaged um, when you switch the car off. Um, so you've got to make sure that you, um, if you're trying to move the car forwards and back, you've got to disengage the, the gearbox lock, or they call it a park lock. I think the, the, the statements that they say for the braking systems are park lock, which is the gearbox lock. I call it gearbox lock because that's more informative, that's, that's clearer. And there's an electronic parking brake, which is actually a normal parking brake, which applies um, similar to a handbrake, pads onto the actual discs or closes the pads on the discs, um, I believe. There's a tool for removing that manually as well, but you don't need to do that. You can do that just by switching the ignition, by switching the ignition on, pressing the electronic parking brake button, um, lower, lower t just on the right-hand side of the lower grade on the, on the steering wheel, and um, below the right-hand side of the steering wheel on the lower part of the dash. Um, and you can do that without starting the car. Um, so thanks a lot for watching guys. Please make sure you, you watch all my videos below if you want some more information, some more details on, on the Ferrari and obviously on the previous videos on other supercars and on my 993, the, the playlist collection on my 993. Please make sure you share this video and so that it, it allows us to grow the channel. We're really looking to move the channel forward and to grow the channel a lot larger than it is at the moment. And we've, we've um, gone past 200 subscribers now, which is a great place to be. Those 200 were quite hard to, to acquire. The first few hundred are very hard to acquire on YouTube. Um, thanks a lot to my loyal subscribers. Please make sure you subscribe. Please make sure you select all so you receive notifications of all future incoming videos. Some great future content to come. So future content that will be coming will be the first drive. We're gonna do some sections on the car similar to what we did on the and the 993 as well. So I'm gonna go into quite technical detail on different aspects of the car that I've learned quite a bit, a bit about the car. Um, so we'll be going through 
um, all the pluses and minuses of having the buttons and selection options on the actual steering wheel. I'll be going through detailing exactly what the different options provide on the steering wheel. And it may seem obvious, obviously lights, windscreen wipers, etc., etc., but it and starting the car, but you can't stop the car with a button. Um, but it's actually, there's a lot more than that there. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Take care and see you in the next video.